Hey guys, it's Rishi once again. Welcome back to our channel, where today we're going to be following 11 plus shapes and letters. So get ready to unravel the mysteries of codes, shapes and letters, where imagination meets logic. Well, let's do this. So what are shapes and letters? Well, as it states above, the figures in the boxes on the left-hand side of the page have certain characteristics that have been given letters. Now it could refer to a shape, an outline, a color, shading, or even orientation. So some of the shapes have two letters relating to two characteristics, and some may even have three. So it's your duty to go ahead and unravel the secrets to find out what shape relates to what code. So let's begin. So what do we notice at the first glance here? I always say, look for something all of the shapes have in common. And in this case, they are all circles. This tells us that the code for circles is R because they all have an R. So we can eliminate D. And also that the letter for the shape comes first. Next, let's look for another common characteristic. We can see that one and three both share S, and that could be for the black outline. And we also know that the outline letter comes second. And then finally, look for any more common characteristics. And we can see that three and four share Q, and that the figures share a vertical line. So this also means that this characteristic comes last. So what have you noticed? Well, we know R is for the circle. We know that S is for the black outline. We know that T is the gray outline. And we know that P has no vertical line. Again, you don't have to write it out just the way I'm doing, but it does make things a little bit clearer. So what are we looking for? We're looking for a circle, which is R, with a gray outline, which is T, and no vertical line, which is P. So that there gives us A as our answer. Marvellous work. Remember, all questions will use this format in the answer. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Question number one. Let's work out the code for the figures one, three, and four, and then decide which box has the correct code for figure two. So again, what do you realize? What common characteristic? do they share? Well, you can see that they both have M, and we notice that that's the only identical shading and outline, which is in the circle and the arrow. Well, taking a look at the fact that only one has G, that could involve the shading and the outline in the heart shape and the L shape, so they both share this one here, hence that's a G. And if we take a look at the letter S, you can see it's shared in figure one and figure four. So what we can notice here is that the parallelogram is behind the circle. Again, shared with one and four. And then if we take a look at M, it's shared with figure three and four. And it looks as if the only identical shading and outline is in the circle and the arrow. And then if you look at T, we can see that the parallelogram is behind the triangle. So what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for two identical shapes, being the heart shape and the L shape. And we know that's going to be G. And the parallelogram being behind the triangle, which we know is can only be T. But that proves that our answer is B. Marvellous. Okay, let's go for question number three. So what do we notice right away? Well, we know that figure one and two share F. So we could see F as a gray haired face shape. So now we know F is the face and that's gray. What do we notice about I? Well, it's shared with figure one and three. So we know it could be a happy face. So figure one is a happy face. We then look at figure two and notice that the O could be a sad face. Whilst Q is a black haired 
base shape, which again is shared by three and four. So we know that this is instantly going to have a Q and with a sad face, it's going to be an O. So we know B is our answer. Okay, let's move over to the next question. So what do we know to say right away? Well, we can see that they both share an M. So what's common between that? Well, it looks as if M is the brick shading in the pentagon. So again, we can link M to the bricks. We then also notice that the shape L is the vertical dashes shading in the pentagon, as that is not seen elsewhere. And then we have a J. The J is shared in figure one and three. So what's common about that? Well, it looks as if the brick shading in that teardrop shape. So we now know J is the teardrop shape there. How does this help us for figure four? Well, we know then that G is the vertical dashes in figure two. So we're certainly going to be looking for a, a G. And we also know that L in figure one was the vertical drops. So for that case, we now know our answer is L, G, and that is A. Again, don't forget, you can pause the video, attempt the question, zoom in if you need to, and then press play to go through the answers. Righty, let's go for the next question. So what do we notice straight away here? Always go for similarities first. Let's start with the S. It looks as if the block arrow is pointing to the left in figure one and figure four. So S will be for these arrows pointing left. And then again, if we take a look at the K, we know the K will be the angled arrow pointing to the right. And that's shared in figure one and three, so we can put a K here right away. And then if we take a look at a T, that's the block arrow pointing to the right. We also have a block arrow pointing to the right. So we now know that's going to be a T, K, and that's D. I hope that was useful. Let's go ahead and dive into the next question. So what do we notice here about these figures? Again, let's go with the similarities. Let's start with H. We know that that's two arches pointing down, which is shared by figure one, three, and four. And as I'm calculating this, I'm also writing out the letter that it could possibly be. And then if we focus on J, we know that it's almost got a corner at the bottom that's been folded. And that's in figure one, two, and three here. So what would we put for that? J. So we now J is a folded paper. And then let's move over to W. It looks as if W is inside the oval. So all of the shapes that are inside an oval, which is figure one, two, and four. So I'll go ahead and put a W here and just link it to the oval. And then if we take a look at the letter I, it's not really found anywhere else. So it looks as if it's the two arches pointing up at, as that is the only set of shapes that are different. Whilst X can be seen as inside a rectangle, which is only found in figure three. So what are we left with? Well, let's take a look. We're looking for a page with a corner on the top this time that's been folded, and that's only found in figure four. So what are we looking for? Two arches pointing down, which we said were a H, page with a corner at the top that's folded, and all of it inside an oval, which is W. Well, in that case, if we use the method of elimination, we can see only D works here. So that would be K as a top folded shape. Okay, let's go ahead and move over to the next question. So what do we notice in question six? Well, the first thing to notice is that we have the letter K and that's used in figure one and figure four. And what's common? Well, the scales shading. So we now know K is the scale shading for figure one and figure four. We then take a look at the letter I, and it looks as if they both have bow ties, and that's in the middle. So we can point I to the bow tie in the middle. And so for figure one, that means that S would be the rectangular frame, and L 
could perhaps be the checked shading which is shared in figure two and three. So instantly, we know that L would be in the middle here. Whilst N can be seen as a kite shape in the middle, because N is in figure four and in figure two, so we'll put N here. So now again, we can eliminate D right away. And what's the final part? Well, it is T, because T is the oval frame. But again, that doesn't help us. We've got L and N, so we're looking for a rectangular frame. Oh, that was S, right? So we've got S as our rectangular frame. We've got checked shading, which is L, and a kite shape in the middle, which is N. So C is the only option that does this. Marvelous. So always try to prove to yourself how you got to where you are now. Beautiful work. Okay, let's move over to the next question, team. This is an interesting one, right? So figure one in three share M. What's common? Well, they have a thin cylinder at the top, so we can label that as M. And if you take a look at R, it looks as if the thin cylinder opening is on the left, and that's common between figure three and four. So we've got M and R. Let's now focus on N. That means that's the cylinder at the top. So we should also have an N as our cylinder is on the top. And we need the thin cylinder opening to the right. And that looks as if it's E. So that's N, E as our answer. And A is the one that works for this. Beautiful. With that in mind, let's move over to the next question. So what do you notice right away here? What is it about the G letter? Well, we know it's got the diagonal shading in both figure one and figure four. So that means the W would be the truck facing the right. What else do we notice? What about letter F? So letter F shows the shading is facing the left. And so the Y means that the truck is facing to the left. So we also need a letter Y as our truck is facing left. And we're looking for the vertical shading. So as you can see, C is the only one that satisfies this because G is the shading to the right. And we're looking for the shading that is not present in any other figure. So that there is our answer. And let's move over into the next question. So instantly, what do I see? I see that the letter X would be an up curving arrow because it's in figure three and figure four. I also notice then that the W is a down curving arrow. And so I can use this for figure two. And that means that T would be the curving arrow at the back. So what does that mean for figure two? Well, that shows us that B is the only one that works because R would be seen as the arrow at the back for figure four. And it also replicates this for figure two. And so B is the only answer. Marvelous work, down to the last question, team. Right, what do we notice here? So figure one and figure two both have S, so it looks as if it's an equal sign with a diagonal going through it, which is shared by figure one and figure two. But remember, it's going to the left, so we're gonna label this as S. And if we take a look at the letter O, that's an arrow on the left going up and an arrow going down. So again, that's shared by O. Don't forget it's up and down. So what does that mean for figure two for P? Well, it shows an arrow on the left is going down and on the right going up. And that's the same as figure four. So we'll put that as P. So again, that's going down and up. So down and up. And then finally, if we take a look at the equal sign with a diagonal line, that would be a J as it's in figure three. So our answer is JP, which is A. So congratulations on completing the NVR 11 plus adventure. We hope you enjoyed exploring the captivating world of codes, shapes, and letters. Keep practicing and honing your NVR skills to excel in your exams. 
Remember, every challenge you face is an opportunity to grow smarter and stronger. So stay curious, keep learning, and we'll see you in the next exciting journey of knowledge.